Hello and welcome to On The Bench, the weekly sports discussion show for Lincolnshire and East Yorkshire right here on Estra TV. Coming up on tonight's programme, we have a roundup of the scores involving our local sporting sides and also discussing with our guests some of the main sports stories. Joining me this evening to give their views and input are our regular pundit Tom Hardy and Tom Ball from Yom Chi Taekwondo. Thanks very much for joining me. Later in the show, Matt tries his hand at a bit of cricket at Cleethorpe's Cricket Club, plus Tom Reed is here to answer your tweets in a view from the estuary. Lots of Toms tonight. But first up, here is a round of for your scores in the weekend sports and team talk. Hull drew two all at Fulham as they came back from two goals down with Nikita Jelovic and Shane Long scoring for the Hull Tigers. Scunthorpe are promoted to League One despite losing 2 0 at Exeter to end their 28 match unbeaten run. Grimsby will face Gateshead in the Screw Premier Playoffs with the first leg at Blundell Park on Thursday evening. Lincoln threw away a 3-1 lead against Barnet to draw 3 all at Central Bank. North Ferriby were picked by AFC Telford to gain automatic promotion from their Conference North after they drew one all at Brackley. As a result, they will now face Geisley in the playoffs. Congratulations to Cleethorpe Town after getting promoted as champions to the Toolstation Premier League after winning 3 all away at Abbey Fottingham. Grimsby Borough ended their season with a 3-0 victory versus Bottisford Town. In the Evo Stick Northern First, Ghoul AFC beats Newcastle Town 1-0 thanks to Andrew Jackson's goal. Meanwhile, Brig Town lost 2-1 sorry, at Gresley AFC despite James Coulson giving the Zebras the lead. College Wanderers beat Buston Sports 2-0 to gain the Lincolnshire Junior Cup and complete a League Cup double after winning all their 15 fixtures in the TSW Printer Scunthorpe League. Finally, Grimsby Town Futsal were crowned champions of the National Soccer AM Cup after a dramatic last-minute goal to Derby County and beat 7-6. Thanks again to these clubs that have sent in their results this week. If you would like your club featured in Team Talk or on future shows, then drop us an email at onthebench at estuary.tv. So, Tom, what are your thoughts on the recent sort of massive fixtures in the recent weeks for the local area? Yeah, it's been good. Obviously, Scunthorpe getting promotion uh, has been one of the big things. Um, the job Russ Wilcox has done there has been absolutely fantastic. Um, what a turnaround. The, the, yeah, yeah, and they can go back into League One, probably with a better squad than they had uh, before when they got relegated last season. Um, so it's looking good for Scunthorpe. Grimsby obviously getting Gateshead in the playoffs. I think that's going to be uh, a big semi-final. Gateshead are on, are on good form. Um, but I think they can come out of that and hopefully get to the final where they'll, they'll face obviously Cambridge or Halifax, mm. which will be another tricky game. Yeah, so a good few weeks coming up in football for Grimsby. Do you think they can do it with the promotion? I think they can. I think they can. I, I think if you'd have asked the fans, I think maybe the, the side they didn't want to face was Halifax in the semi-final. But at the end of the day, if any good side, you've got to beat the sides that are around you. So mm. they've got to beat you know, whoever get put in front of. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Paul Hurst has mentioned in the press as well that they've got the advantage being at home for the first leg. What are your thoughts on that? It might be an advantage, but I think at the end of the day, they've just got to go out and win. They've got mm. to win. If they win both the games, then, then they're through. So, I mean, it can, you can say it can be an advantage being at home first, but if they win both the games, they're in the final anyway. Mm. And the, the second leg is on Sunday, is that right? So it's quite a quick turnaround? It is, yeah. And obviously, he'll hope that the players recover well for it. Um, mm. be a big game away at Gateshead. Um, hopefully, be a good away following. But I think Town can do it and get through to the final. Yeah, definitely. And we've got teams like um, North Ferriby that have been just absolutely brilliant this season as well. Hull, obviously, in the Premier League have done phenomenally well from what people expected. How do you think their season's going to end? They've got a few games left. Yeah, I think they've got a couple of tricky games left as well. Um, and obviously the FA Cup final is going to be a big distraction for them. Mm, the players I was going to say, do you think they're going to take the foot off the gas for Premier League? Yeah, maybe a little bit. I mean, it's it's probably natural that it's going to be a distraction. Players might be you know, backing out of tackles and maybe don't want to go into them because they don't want to miss the FA Cup final. But, um, you know, it's going to be excellent for them to get there and actually play, play at Wembley again for the final. And mm -hmm. hopefully they can beat Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Be, be a, definitely uh, a big result. Yeah. What do you think they've got to play for in the Premier League? Much, do you think, still? Or is that kind of... No, I, th I don't think they'll get dragged into it. I think the, the side they've got to, I think the next game's against Villa. Um, mm -hmm. If they can get a, a win there, then they've got nothing to worry about at all. Mm. And you've also um, got North Ferriby that are playing Geisley in the playoffs as well, so hopefully we can get big things from them. Um, just for the weekend in the Premier League, we had the Liverpool-Chelsea game. So that was an interesting game, obviously, in the title race. Chelsea, although they got the win, they've counted, counted themselves out the title race. Do you still think that that's not an option for them to win? Well, I still think Man City 
Man City, are, uh, I've said all along, Man City will win it. But um, I think Mourinho is just playing his mind games again. I think he's still never not nah, Mourinho. Nah, yeah. <laughs> I think I think he still he still knows there's a chance that they they could do it if there's slip ups from from other teams. And it's <laughs> very, a great very result. good pun. Well done. Yeah. Thank you for that one with <laughs> Liverpool. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, it was it was a good game yesterday, but it was it was a tough one for Liverpool with the defensive side that Chelsea played. But you know, hopefully we can maybe have a bit of balance with the last few games with uh, City and Liverpool, so we'll see what so happens. We'll have to see. We'll have yeah, to see, definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your viewpoints on that one. Mm. Next up on the show, Tom Reid answers your tweets that have been sending in. Here, is, here he is with a view from the estuary. Hello and welcome to this week's View from the Estuary. Can Grimsby Town return to the Football League after securing a playoff place? Personally, Grimsby Town um, I feel they can do that. They've already had a great season as a whole. They've had a few stop-start moments, um, including the managerial situation, but that, that has been resolved a long time ago. And they went on a fantastic run and they've uh, achieved what they wanted to, which was finishing the playoff places. Automatic promotion was always going to be tough. It's a tough league to get, gain promotion from and there's only one place. So the playoff places were realistically Grimsby Town's goals. Uh, over the next two games then against Gateshead to reach the final, uh, this season in the league, they drew two Gateshead 2-2 at home and they won 2-1 away so you know they've not lost to Gateshead this season so that'll be in the back of the players minds so over the two legs I think they can overcome Gateshead and I think in the final it'll possibly be Cambridge I think Cambridge will overcome Halifax and against Cambridge this season they won 2-1 away but lost 1-0 at home so again that's nicely poised if it's a final against Cambridge uh, it, that could go either way I think there's no favourite there uh, but I personally think Grimsby can do that are Hull City safe from relegation this season? I would have to say yes, Hull City are safe from relegation. They're currently 13th uh, with 37 points after 35 games. So they've still got three games left to pick up points, uh, which means they are five points clear from the 18th position, which is occupied by Norwich. Um, I can't see Norwich, Fulham or Cardiff overtaking Hull. They need to make up five points and then claim more points to go beyond them. And I can't see Hull, um, you know, letting that slip. They've got the best goal difference out of the bottom eight sides, so that counts for an extra point as well. So I think Hull are more than safe. Uh, you know, Norwich, Fulham, and Cardiff—they've not had the best season. Norwich have still got two huge games left, and I can't see Norwich getting anything from those matches. Um, so Hull, I think, will be safe, and they will be playing Premier League football next season. And then, of course, they can concentrate on the FA Cup final. Um, so you know, they may have minds on that. But for now, Premier League football for Hull, they are safe. They've had a great season. They've done what they needed to do. Have Liverpool let slip their title chances by losing to Chelsea? Um, it is a massive blow to their title chances, yes. I wouldn't say it's completely 100% over, um, but it is very, very unlikely that Liverpool can win that now. Um, obviously, Manchester City are in the driving seat. Um, they just need to win their final three games and uh, they, they claim the title because they have a superior goal difference. I think Chelsea are slightly out of it. They're probably third favourites and Liverpool in second now. Um, but anything can happen between now and the end of the season. There is still a couple of games left for Liverpool and Man City have that game in hand. But you need to win those games, of course. It's not easy. We've seen Crystal Palace um, have a decent run of results of late. And you know they can take something off Liverpool, possibly, um, to Man City's advantage. But Man City could also lose to Everton as well at the weekend. So it, it's huge. But I think personally, Liverpool, yeah, it's going to be unlikely for them. And I, I do feel for Steven Gerrard as well, um, you know, the captain of the club. It could be down to his mistake that let Chelsea in. Thank you if you sent a question in this week. If you want your question featured on the programme, you can email us on the bench at estuary.tv or you can still tweet us at Ask Estuary. Thanks for that, Tom. If you have any questions that you'd like him to answer, then that Twitter address is at Ask Estuary. Alternatively, you can email them to onthebench at estuary.tv. That's all we've got for part one. We'll be back in again in a few minutes.
Welcome back to On The Bench. We're joined on the show by Tom Hardy and Tom Ball. Tom, you featured on a VT not so long ago on On The Bench, where Tom came, uh, sorry, Matt came to visit you down at the club. That's right. How did he get on? It was a good experience. Good. It was nice to uh, have some in outside interest. Brilliant. So just tell me a little bit more about your club, yourself personally as well, with the sport as well. Just a bit of background. Uh, oh, OK. Uh, well, our club is a complete non-profit, um, family-run club. Uh, me and my dad have over 20 years' experience in WTF Taekwondo, uh, leading from basic beginner up to a, a, a good national standard and uh, we have access or pathways and gateways to excel students even further so from novice to uh, elite pathways we can cater for. Brilliant and you also it's quite <coughs> a family orientated club as well isn't it? Very much so. So what level can or what age can children start from? Uh, we tend to take them on from about uh, four years old so we have a small tots class um, so that's four to seven depending on the children's aptitudes and how much they want to sort of be involved that's fantastic for gaining confidence, learning coordination, new new skills and abilities, especially for starting early school and main schools as well. And that leads on to our main class, where we have a mixed class between six and uh, the, the age isn't a limit really. So we, if you can still kick it and put it out, it's sort of 75, but I'll still teach you. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> That's good to know. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned there about um, the different levels that you do. Yes. So if anybody, does it have to ha do they have to have a certain fitness level or anything to start at the club? Not at all. Uh, ideally, uh, as you come in the door, we'll sort of give you an initial fitness assessment. Right. And nothing like you'd have a, a gym induction or anything. We'd, we'd see how you are. And then we'd actually try and... Um, tailor your training to suit your body shape or your aptitudes or your abilities. We actually, uh, we have, we cater for disabilities as well. So we have deaf and uh, autistic children that we teach as well, so. Perfect. And also you mentioned about the kind of higher level that you train to as well. So mm -hmm. you personally have, have um, competed nationally. Yes, and, um, um, as a junior and a senior. So. Okay, no need to brag. <laughs> <laughs> and you also train people for national competitions and also Olympic style, is that yeah, right? Yeah, uh, an Olympic style sparring. So what you saw in 2012 with Jay Jones and yeah. uh, Urban uh, Leteo. And, um, that, to that sort of standard uh, or to that style of uh, martial uh, Sparring, sorry, I'm getting tongue tied. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so we'll, we'll do the Olympic style sparring training and body conditioning, but we'll also teach street reel or practical use of Taekwondo for self defense purposes only. Perfect. So. And have you got anybody in the club at the minute that's kind of destined for stardom or uh, Olympic or we, anything? We've got two uh, promising first Dan candidates going for their first black belts at uh, November. So they're only 10 years old, which is quite a good turnaround for them. Um, we've got a uh, I would say probably two or three potential male or females that could do well in the nationals this September. Perfect. And just tell me a little bit about the events and things that you do in the local area because it's quite a community-based um, club, isn't it? Oh, very much so. Um, we, we try to do uh, as much um, sponsored events and local charity events as we can, participate within the community and try and raise our profile but also try and make communities established so an uh, example of that would be over at Brookingby uh, there was nothing really there it was a bit run down the community centre uh, officials asked us if we come do a taste today or run some taster sessions to try and get something there we did that uh, a year on now we've got a, a club of 10 strong dedicated students where others had been before and just sort of gave up after a couple of weeks we've we've persevered and that's part of the tenants of take on to itself so. perfect so if anybody out there was thinking about getting involved in your sport, what would you say to them just to get them interested? Uh, don't be shy. Come give it a go, really. Um, it's we, we can cater for the, as I say, from the, the very beginner to the ultimate of shyness to bringing you out of your shell and feeling confident and learning your abilities and skills for life, not just for self-defence. That's, that's good sell for me. Mm. Um, so just quickly, how can people get find out about more information about the club? Well, obviously, uh, in the modern age of uh, technology, we've got our Facebook and uh, website, so feel free to contact us on there as and when, or come down to the club and see us directly. First session's free, so. So they search the club name, which uh, is? It's uh, Yomchi Taekwondo. Perfect, thank you very much. Well, thank you for all your information on the no, club. That's very thank informative. You for telling. Thank you. Next up on the programme, the local lead started this week. Matt went for a knockabout in the nets with Cleethorpe's Cricket Club. Let's see how he got on. OK, Cleethorpe's Cricket Club. We're here to have some fun today. Bowling in the nets, bit of batting. Let's see what's in store for us. The lads are waiting. Let's go have some fun.
we play cricket in the Yorkshire League. We have four Saturday teams and two Sunday teams. We have uh, plenty of junior teams as well. We're sort of a, a sports social club. I come here regularly. I, uh, I train on Mondays. I uh, have a game on Tuesdays down here. I train Wednesday, Thursday, coach Friday. We get about five or six groups of about 20 people. Try and do some drills, do some batting, bowling, fielding drills, just simple basic stuff to get in the body cricket. It's great sport. Everyone is team sport, so get everyone involved and make new friends, really. There's people just quite happy it's coming here and it's a nice club, it's a really good club. Yeah. I'm seeing the last 12, 13 years that people are just going really bright future here. So Andy, please, tell me what I'm going to do. OK, you're going to have a bowl up to the batsman in the net OK down there. I'd imagine you're going to bowl gentle sort of medium. So what you're going to do, you're going to hold, try and hold the ball down the seam like that and then sort of come in and bowl it and try and get it in the general direction and, and get him out from there. What we're going to do now is going to do a bit of fielding catching, okay? They hit it up in the air, one person catches it, throws it to the other person who then throws it over the stump so he can keep it. So, Alex, thanks for having us down here today. No problem. I've thoroughly enjoyed it tonight. Good. How old are you, old are you in the club? If you wanted to come down and join? Um, well, we've got, yeah, we've, our, obviously our website, www.cleethoughtscreekclub.co.uk. You can write a message on there or find some information there or contacts from there. There's, Facebook page, which is Great Up Group Facebook page, and there's also a Twitter account as well. So Okay, so plenty of ways to get hold yeah, of you. Plenty of ways in the media to get hold of us, yeah. Okay, and if they wanted to just come down, they're more than welcome? Yeah, absolutely. It's a you know, it's member member social club, but anyone who wants to come down is more than welcome. If you want to get hold of this club, if you want to be involved in this club, which I suggest you do, get yourself on the internet and find out more about it, because I've had a great time. Thank you very much indeed. No worries, pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so thank you to Andy Ellis and the boys here at uh, Cleethorpe's Cricket Club. Had a great time, learnt a lot about cricket. I see it on the TV, it looks quite easy. I'll be honest with you, when you're in the sticks, it's not that easy. Good times today, if you fancy it, want to try something different, get yourself down to the cricket club. More than welcome for all ages. I'll tell you where I'm off now, to the bar. Thanks, Matt. Just before we go, Luis Suarez was announced as the winner of the PFA Player of the Year Award, which sees a complete turnaround for this player. Tom, how do you think that Liverpool's season had have been if he had a left at the beginning of the season or end of last season, as was thought, and he'd have gone to Arsenal? I think they'd have struggled, and Arsenal would have had a good player on their hands if they'd have got him. They'd have solved the striker crisis there. The, the job Brendan Rodgers has done, turning him round, has been absolutely fantastic. Um, it, the discipline of him this season seems to have been a lot better. I think he puts a lot of it down to his wife or girlfriend uh, for controlling him um, and helping him out with that. So he's just been magnificent this year. The only player that came close to him, I think, was Hazard from Chelsea mm. um, to winning the, the PFA Player of the Year award. Mm. I mean, this is a player that last season had a 10 match ban for biting somebody's arm, which is just ridiculous. I mean, Tom, what about the kind of self discipline and respect that you sort of um, <coughs> drum into people at your, at your club? Well, uh, obviously that's unacceptable in society, never mind just a game, so mm. um, with that, in terms of uh, Suarez being sort of disciplined by his girlfriend, she must have some form of uh, tenants of Taekwondo inside of her, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um, and also, Tom, with Everton, they've got kind of mixed loyalties going into the last few games of the season, because if they beat City, that then lets Liverpool in, so where do, where do you think they're going to sit with that one? Tricky one, because you don't know what they're going to prefer. Um, yeah. Winning against City might not necessarily mean that they get you know fourth place either, so they haven't got a massive amount to play for, um, and they could let Liverpool win the title. Yeah, I know, uh, you know, as, a, as an Everton fan, how can you kind of let that happen? But then, I don't Tricky know, one. this season's been so up in the air, it has, it has been right. a different one. And any ideas of who you think is going to get relegated this season? The teams that are in there at the moment, I think Cardiff, Norwich and Fulham. I think so Sunderland, Sunderland are out of it, I think they'll, they'll get out of it now. Pretty cut in that one. Yep. Well, we'll see what happens. It's the Premier League, you never know. <laughs> well, that's all we've got time for this week. Thanks to Tom Hardy and Tom Ball. Plus, thanks very much to you for watching. Tune in next week. Until then, goodbye.